Hello everybody, this is HG Shaves here, and I'm back with another video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing one new product, and I guess revisiting three others that I have at some point reviewed on this channel. So, what's the new product? Well, it's this right here. And what is this, you're probably asking? Well, this is Australian Private Reserve Skyfall. This was a uh, exclusive release back in 2018 for a forum in Australia, some sort of shaving forum. And uh, a buddy of mine, Tim, sent me a sample of this to try out, which is why I've been rashing it so much. Um, and I've just absolutely loved this soap this week. Um, it was nice to return to the APR soap base as well, which I found to be easier than I remember to work with. But just the scent on the soap is just absolutely unreal. And I'm gonna to read to you now, um, Dan, the owner of APR, his scent description for when uh, this uh, soap scent was originally released. Skyfall smells like a stupidly rich, deep, creamy, masculine, gentleman's fragrance that combines in accord, Indian, Mysore, sandalwood, ambergris, tobacco, and single malt whiskey, ably, sorry, ably assisted by herba mate, a tiny hint of leather and civet. It is full-bodied, very slightly herbaceous, with beautiful spiced black tea, a little peat, some caramel balsams, and a very special pepper top note. All right, so as usual with any sort of written media that I see from Dan, I learn an, a, a new word or two in the process. Um, now, in layman's terms, I smell a lot of what he describes in that scent description. The pepper top note is pretty special, and the only other scent I've smelled that has a prominent uh, pepper top note like this is um, lavender pulvre from Chateau Lux. I don't know how you pronounce it, but basically it's a lavender pepper scent. And um, that's the only other soap I can recall smelling, or sorry, scent, because that's a fragrance. Um, only other scent I can remember smelling, but there's such a prominent pepper top note. As he says, slightly herbaceous. I definitely agree with that. I think that's kind of some of the musks that are in there. So civet is a kind of animal musk and also ambergris. And what else do I smell? I smell a little bit of the tea. I kind of get what he means by peat, like peat from a, from a scotch. I can definitely spell that. And uh, maybe a little bit of tea um, as well, what he mentioned. But just, wow, a really beautiful scent. Um, and as my friend Tim says, the guy who sent this to me, he says when he's feeling indulgent, he will pull out the soap from his den to use. And I can see why. I mean, I, I feel like I've just been really uh, treating myself this week, uh, so to speak. And um, did I mention Tim's from Australia? I hope I did. And the real reason why um, we sort of got in contact in the first place was he agreed to sell me his fine aluminum slant which this was a razor I reviewed a couple months ago. Um, Michael Friedberg very kindly lent me his, and I've now used this slant, the Fatip slant, the Above the Tide slant, and the original um, German Bakelite one that this was kind of modeled after. And this is the best one for me. Uh, maybe not by far the best one, but I think if you compare them side by side, all four of these razors, this is um, a really, really nice uh, razor. It's really smooth, but still very efficient like you'd expect from a slant. And um, while I think the retail price of 100 or $125 is a little bit too much for this aluminum slant, um, if you're lucky, like I was, you can find somebody maybe on the used market who would sell it to you for a little bit less. So again, thanks to uh, Tim for, sell it, for selling me this razor and then also gifting me uh, some Australian soap samples. And this was the first one out of the bunch that he sent me that he told me to uh, check out. Uh, in terms of products I'll be revisiting today, I'm going to continue using the Dogwood Handcrafts uh, Maggard Timberwolf Knot. I just checked my history and this will be my fifth time using this brush in the past six weeks. So I think it's fair to say that we've been going on a bit of a honeymoon together. Um, I think the honeymoon is going to end after this week though. I'm going to return to some uh, badger brushes and uh, boar brushes that I need to look at. And then for uh, Poe Shave today, uh, we're going to be using Meshtar uh, once again. 
I found this set paired really nicely with uh, Skyfall. Kind of a happy coincidence that these uh, two uh, international uh, shaving products work together so well. So that's our introduction for today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my face wet, get the brush loaded up, and uh, bring you back in when I'm uh, about ready to lather. So be right back. Okay, we're back. And as you saw uh, a few minutes ago, I don't really have that much soap uh, pressed into this bowl because I'm trying to conserve it. And it's just amazing with a synthetic brush and this particular soap base, along with some other soap bases, just how little soap you really need um, to, you know, get a good load and start your face lather. Um, so as you start working up this um, soap, even just loading it off of the um, well, sample, um, the scent comes up to you very quickly. And um, even though this is a you know two year old release, um, the scent is still, I mean, amazingly strong. Um, but not like overpowering. Um, I think um, it's likely due to just kind of the types of scents that are being used to this, like pepper and the musks, um, you know, peat, however he's kind of um, creating that um, effect. They're, they're just kind of strong scent notes. You know, it's not that the soap is like uh, overly perfumed, overly scented. I just think it's um, sort of the oils that he put in, right? Um, and uh, yeah, this is um, just a really terrific, um, complex scent. You know, I was thinking to, um, well, this week, I was thinking this week about how I think almost everything I've ever smelled from APR uh, with the exception of a couple things. So, I don't know, let's say maybe 8 out of 10. Like, I smelled 10 things from APR, and 8 of them I've really liked and enjoyed and kept. So, I have several of their fragrances. Um, a couple are Eau de Toilette uh, Strength, and a couple are... Eau de Parfum strength. Um, and then I also have several of their soaps, the ones that they've released on their own under their own name, just APR, but then also the ones that they released in conjunction with other um, artisans. I know Dan really likes to focus on doing the scent. Um, that's his thing, right? He doesn't make soap. Even when it's under his own release, somebody else, like, made this soap for him. Um, I'm sure he has input on it because he's a he's a shaver as well. But um, he's just really focused on the fragrance. And, man, it really, really shows in everything I've smelled of his. Um, doesn't even have to be, you know, I don't even have to like it. But you, you, just, ha you just kind of have to respect the time and creativity and craftsmanship that he puts into um, his sense. Um, it's really kind of incredible what he does. And these are definitely scents that um, get better with use, I would say, because, um, you know, there's, there's some serious stuff going on in these uh, soap scents. And it can seem kind of a little, I don't know, overbearing at first. But similar to other kind of complex things I've learned in life or experienced in life, I find that they do get um, better with time. And so that's also a nice quality. Um, the lather here is just completely coming down the brush. Um, I learned that... This lather performs extremely well. Um, if you put a good bit of water into it, so I'm trying to do that now. Um, yeah, so like other things I've experienced in my life, this is something that does get better with time. And I think that's a, 
think that's a good quality. Um, your perception of it will change. The things you notice in the complex fragrance will change. And um, we're uh, very lucky to have a number of uh, artisans who create these com these complex scents for us. Um, so that's my two cents. Um, I think I'm just going to keep working this for a sec and um, then I'll bring you back in when we're about ready to shave. All right, here we go. First pass with the fine aluminum slant. So as you might expect from an aluminum slant razor, you kind of have um, two things that you probably want to consider um, when you're using this, which, um, darn, I got so bright on the handle when I was going to rinse that. Uh, it's okay, we have a towel for that. Um, there, there are two things you want to consider probably when you're using this razor, which are to say one, that it's aluminum, so it's probably lighter than, you know, most razors in your collection or that you've used. And then two, the fact that it's a slant. So I would argue that both of those, um, characteristics um, make this to be a slightly more efficient or potentially rough shave than you may expect. Um, having said that, when you do use the razor properly, I don't think there's anything kind of bitey or harsh um, about it. Meaning if you keep a light touch and don't bear down too much, keep a good angle, the razor's incredibly smooth. I would argue that it's surprisingly smooth compared to the other slants that I've tried. Okay, pass number one, gonna rinse and uh, come back for pass number two. Just a sec. Before we load up for pass number two, I just wanted to point out how easily and wonderful um, the slather came together. And um, I was definitely under hydrating it a little bit at the start of the week, but that's why I. Um, wait a few days, use these products for as close to a week as I can before I share my thoughts with you all. Because, um, yeah, sometimes you, you underload at the beginning, you overload at the beginning. And I think that's really what I was doing is I was overloading because I was really worried about getting enough soap onto the brush. But just, I didn't really need to be worrying about that. Should have been focused more on making sure I got enough water in there. Okay, pass number two across and kind of with the grain. <laughs> I think the, the angle with this razor is easy to find. Forgot what pass I was doing there. Um, the angle's pretty easy to find. I think you can 
you know, if you're going to go uh, north to south, you really just have to tilt up a little bit. It's not um, a crazy angle where you have to hold the handle really high and like ride the cap or anything. I also do try and use the sound uh, just a little bit. Um, sound of the hair is cutting to let you know. Because there, again, there is kind of a surprising kind of smoothness to this razor. And it's not, you don't always feel the blade. Um, so you have to rely on other things to tell you that you're cutting, technique, sound, things like that. All right, second pass done. Gonna rinse and bring it back in for final pass, third pass. Okay, final pass against and across the ring. Okay, nice final pass there. Just taking it really easy, uh, doing some of those long strokes, and uh, I think the razor will reward you, uh, as I said, to keep it light touch, things like that. Okay, I'm going to do my final rinse and come back and talk to you over post shave. For post shave today, I'm going to be using the Meshtar aftershave lotion. Uh, if you all watched my video a couple weeks ago, you'll know that this is the newest uh, artisan shave soap from Croatia. And Really the reason why I picked this um, lotion to use for today is just because I thought the uh, scents kind of paired together nicely. Um, I mean, this is obviously not as complex as Skyfall, but this is a dark kind of aquatic scent on the lotion. And there's a little bit of vetiver in there maybe. And I think it, um, pairs really, really nicely with the Skyfall, especially for those first kind of, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes after you finish your shave and you might be able to still smell a little bit of the soap in addition to your aftershave. I think they blend together really nicely. And, um, you know, this, this lotion scent doesn't last for more than maybe a couple hours, but that's all I needed to. And then I'll use my fragrance for the day on top of it. So, um, yeah, happy to return to Meshtar so soon. All right, well, let's do a final recap. So the Timberwolf Knot, I've been using for five out of six weeks. Uh, I've been taking it. We've become very close friends. And um, yeah, it's just been really uh, nice to uh, get back to synthetics a little bit. And um, working with the Skyfall soap, of course. It's too bad that none of us will probably ever own that soap because it was very exclusive and I don't think it's ever coming back anytime soon. But anyway, it's nice to just be able to try something that you know that um, you might only try it for that one time and then that's it. I still have a little bit of the sample left, maybe half a teaspoon that I'll either give to somebody else or break out at a, 
don't know, uh, pip at a nice time. But um, anyway, it's it's cool to know that kind of this might be the last time I use it. Uh, and it was a wonderful uh, five shades this week with it. So, and then the fine aluminum slant. So happy to own this razor now. Um, this is the only slant that I own now. I um, cleared out of the other ones, let's say, and I'm very happy to have this as my one slant. I don't think I need any more. This is uh, plenty of variety for my, uh, you know, slant razor category. So uh, thank you all for watching so much. Um, next week, as I said, I'm going to get back to uh, either a boar brush or a badger brush. And I'll be kind of continuing on that for a few weeks. Um, and, I'm, and I might be sticking with the same soap or at least the same soap base for several weeks in an attempt to really give myself the best chance at using those animal hair brushes to the best of their ability. Um, to, to the best of my ability because I'm not the best at using boars and badgers yet. So um, that's definitely coming. Um, if you have any questions or comments uh, about the show today, feel free to get in touch. But um, I think that's going to do it for today. So this has been HG Shaves. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.